what we're going to do over the next few slides is try to kind of think through that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation uh, at various points of the titration curve that we've been looking at over the last week or so. Uh, so when we look at that equation, pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. And uh, we're looking at that part that we've just added a little bit of base, just a little bit of hydroxide. So the, the reaction's begun. You can see the reaction in that upper left-hand corner of that pink box there, HA plus OH minus. So we've added a little bit of OH minus, uh, but the OH minus is the limiting reactant. We do have some A minus that has formed, but not much because the A minus that's formed is based on your limiting reactant, which in that part of the graph is your hydroxide concentration there. Uh, and then we haven't added much, so there's not going to be much A minus, but there's some. Uh, so the A minus concentration would be less than our HA. And if we did the log of A minus over HA, since A minus is smaller than HA, we're taking the log of a fraction, so that's a negative number. If your log of A minus over HA is a negative number and we're adding that to the pKa value, that means that the pH is going to be less than the pKa in that little chunk of the graph there. So it happens before the midpoint or what's also called the half equivalence point uh, in that blue highlighted section there. That's where we're focusing on, where if, we, if I asked you to uh, predict the pH in that section of the buffer, the titration curve there, that you would estimate that the pH is going to be less than the pKa value. What if you're at that uh, half equivalence point? Then what? Same equation applies, but if it's the half equivalence point, that means that half of the HA has reacted and turned into A minus, and half of it still remains. So what that means is the A minus concentration equals the HA concentration. And if you're taking the log, when you do A minus divided by HA and you get one, taking the log of one, the log of 1 is 0, so your pH is going to equal your pKa. That happens at the midpoint of a titration, halfway to the equivalence point. Uh, so for example, let's say you find that it takes 40 milliliters of base to reach your equivalence point. It would take 20 milliliters, half that amount, uh, to be at your midpoint, half of your weak acid turning into the A minus instead. That midpoint is an important point on that graph. One of the interesting things is that you can uh, identify maybe a mystery acid using the Ka value. Uh, so if it gave you a graph and a few different Ka values and it said which acid are we using to titrate, uh, which acid are we using in this titration process? What you could do is find the pKa values of all of those acids. Look at the pH at the midpoint, the half equivalence point, and then do 10 to the negative pKa. Since your pKa matches your pH at that midpoint, um, then you'll know the Ka value of your mystery acid, and you can identify which one it might be. So we're just talking about that one little spot only. It's not a, a span of volume of sodium hydroxide there, right? It's just half the halfway to the equivalence point exactly on the nose is when the pH equals the pKa. Then what if we're past that midpoint, but we're not at the equivalence point yet? So that means that we're, we have more than half of our HA has turned into A minus. So we have more A minus than HA. 
if a minus is bigger than h a, we're going to be taking the log of a number that's greater than 1, which would be some kind of positive number. So if we do pH equals pKa plus some kind of positive number, that means the pH is going to be greater than the pKa when you're at that section of the graph. So past the midpoint, but not at the equivalence point yet when you're in that blue highlighted zone there. That's when your pH is going to be greater than your pKa. So what about at the equivalence point? You can't use the henderson hasselbalch equation at the equivalence point, but why not? In order to use the henderson hasselbalch equation, you need both A- and HA available. But if you're at the equivalence point, there is no limiting, no excess reactant. They get all used up. So the HA is gone, the hydroxide's gone, and all you have left is A- and water. There isn't any HA. So if you tried to use the equation and HA is equal to zero, when you plug in zero at the bottom of that log, you're dividing by zero, which is mathematically impossible, so the equation is just invalid at the equivalence point. So how could you use the henderson hasselbalch equation? You might get some problem that looks something like this. Uh, what if we were to mix two grams of benzoic acid and two grams of sodium benzoate? put them in enough water to make one liter of solution, and we want to know what the pH of that buffer is. So we have all the components because we know the P, we have the Ka value provided for us, so we could figure out what the pKa is by doing the negative log of 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, we need to figure out what the molarities of that A- minus and HA are, so we could plug them into the equation. So by switching those grams of sodium benzoate into moles, and it says we're going to dissolve it in enough, enough water to make one liter of solution, we could get the molarity of the sodium benzoate. We could get the molarity of the benzoic acid in the same way. So now we know the molarity of the benzoate ion. That would be the conjugate base of our weak acid benzoic acid. We could plug those numbers into our equation, pH equals pKa plus log of A minus over HA. We know the pKa value, we know the A minus and the HA concentrations, and so the pH of our buffer would be 4.13. Those useful buffers are going to meet two requirements. They have to be able to control the pH it is a desired value. So that's why you're going to look, how we said before, why is it useful at this particular range? You're going to look for a pKa that is somewhere near the pH that you're aiming for, and then you can fine-tune that pH using your ratio of conjugate base to acid. Because it has both the acid and the base in there, it'll have the ability to keep the pH pretty constant. In order to keep that pH roughly constant though, the ratio of the molarities of the weak acid and its conjugate base or the weak base and its conjugate acid should differ by no more than a factor of 10 or 1 tenth depending on how you're thinking of it. Uh, so your A- minus concentration could be 10 times more concentrated than your HA or vice versa. And the reason why that is, is when we plug that into the henderson hasselbalch equation, if we're doing the log of 10, you get a value of positive 1. So that means your pH might go up by 1. If your uh, A- minus is 1 tenth the concentration of your HA, you'd be doing the log of 0.1, which is negative 1. So when you plug that into your henderson hasselbalch equation, pH would equal pKa minus 1, so your pH might go down by 1. So if the goal of a buffer is to try and keep the pH kind of steady, kind of roughly the same, 
it's not going to work. The pH is going to start to deviate too much if that A minus to HA ratio is larger than a factor of 10.